Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this special edition of my Rangers of Shadow Deep playthroughs. This one is going to be called The Rescue and um, as anyone who has watched my other videos will know, things did not go well for my heroes, for um, our, uh, our Rangers, uh, Garesh and his party of um, the Elven Mage, uh, his um, sword smith bodyguard, a bet the healer, Mehte the dog, and um, things got really rough for us last time when we were defeated outside Tor Verdon as regards to the, um, uh, the, the scenarios that are presented in the book. So I thought long and hard about what I was going to do and how I was going to do it really, and I thought, what can we do to make... Uh, I didn't want to play the same scenario again on, uh, on, on uh, video, if you like, so I thought that we'd go with something a little bit different. I might play the same scenario again myself when I've got time, but for you guys, I thought I would do something a little bit different. So, what has happened since that last uh, adventure? What has happened in that time? Well, in the detritus outside Tor Verdon, the Hobgoblin uh, King, who has uh, taken ownership of the tower and the tunnels underneath, an evil Hobgoblin, an evil Hobgoblin called Dengar, who is a, um, uh, an overlord of some of the goblinoid creatures who live in that area. He actually rounded up our badly injured heroes and he brought them into the dungeons uh, underneath Tor Verdon. And over the last couple of days, as they've healed up slowly, he is waiting for his overlord himself to arrive and actually take over uh, and uh, take these people away into the further deeps of the Shadow Deep. But here, underneath in the dark, desperate dungeons under Tor Verdon, they are now being kept. And as you can see, these green areas here are actually pits. Uh, there's no liquid in them. They're actually deep pits, about 10 foot deep. And in this pit up here, our heroes are being kept. So here they all are uh, in, in this area here. And what has happened is Mehte, the Hound, has managed to escape. The Hobgoblin wasn't interested in the Hound, in all honesty. And as they sort of strode over his prone body, he managed to get away, get back to Garesh's father's kingdom, and a rescue party is en route to try and break them out of the, uh, uh, of the dungeon and actually carry on the adventures in the Shadow Deep because it's, ex it's becoming closer and closer and taking over more land all the time and things are getting quite desperate. Garesh, here he is, is here in the, in the pit along with uh, Fortek, the elven mage along with Kyra his bodyguard and pet bet the healer are all there uh, in various states of repair in the in the pit there and they can't get out Dengar the um, I say his name, Dengar the uh, hobgoblin king uh, was actually embarrassed uh, by Kaini the uh, the man at arms the barbarian warrior the greatest warrior of our group in the uh, in the last game and actually flawed disarmed and badly wounded he wants to make up for that so in this pit here in this pit area here he has placed Kaini and he has placed an ogre to fight her being watched by some of his minions his chosen minions he wants to see her beaten to death in front of his minions there and that is occurring just as this game starts they are just about to begin this pit fight deep in the dungeon here. So as these hobgoblins and uh, orcs and creatures are, are watching what's going on here, Kaini is gonna start a desperate fight for life in the um, in the pit. There are some other orc and hobgoblin guards based around the dungeon area, and all of them are keeping an eye out to make sure that none of these escape. None of our heroes here are in any fit way to get out of the pit. They've been caught there for a number of days. They need a rope. To actually bring them out and um, then escape down this way on the board. However, Heaven, one of the most loyal men at arms of um, uh, of Garesh's father's household, has led a party of adventurers to strike deep into Tor Verdon and try and get the them out of this uh, horrendous situation in which they find themselves. He has with him his Skaya, his Skaya, his Squire, Ben. Ben, the squire, there he is. These two have been joined by three elven archers 
who are um, some of Fortex people who have come to try and rescue him and, uh, and Kyra from the pit as well. And we have the loyal Mechte who is once again with us deep here in the shadow deep to try and rescue our friends. We have 10 turns to do it, my friends. The dice will count us up there. The white dice will always be the heroes. The red dice will be the, uh, the creatures. All these will count as gnolls as per the scenario, except the gnoll sergeant we have there and we have an ogre. Okay, uh, our friends here, um, the uh, the main character here, Heaven, will be a um, uh, the ranger. He has the same statistics as Garesh. We have his squire, will be a man at arms, and the, the other three are archers, and then we have Mech there originally. Their plan is to break in, make their way to the pit, rescue our heroes, and leave the board as best they can. There are some random encounters as well. And um, in order to begin, they stay undiscovered as long as they can pass a stealth check with a, um, uh, a score of 12 to start. So, without further ado, let me just check that all is going okay. I hope you like the board. It's um, a board that I managed to get hold of a number of years ago. Um, I think it's quite good. It's like a polystyrene base with some of these um, uh, rock faces which can be placed up. As I said, these pits are... Um, uh, 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 sort of fighting pits really and they're not um, uh, don't have any liquid in them there's three bits of treasure up here as well the blue gems okay so let's begin turn one okay heaven let's make a stealth check okay with a stealth of 12 target number of 12 if you can beat that none of the creatures will react to him until they are attacked what a great start those elven feet come uh, silently into this underground area. And even though he's wearing heavy armour, he has nothing. Uh, he makes not a sound, nor does Ben, his squire. They make their way slowly and stealthily into the, um, into the dungeon. Anyone within three inches of heaven can make a move in this first phase. So that is just about everybody. So Mehde is going to make his way just to the side there. These two elven archers are going to make their way up here. Okay, they've both taken a turn, uh, just one turn of movement, and they're both going to fire their bows at this um, uh, hobgoblin there. Okay, they've got plus two to their um, their archery score. So, as we do in the Rangers uh, Rangers of Shadow Deep, it's just like a combat roll, but on this occasion, the hobgoblin doesn't fight back. So he has plus two as well. So it's a straight roll. So let's do the first uh, Elven Archer here, who let, brings up his bow silently in the darkness. Just see the over the movement of this character here and opens fire. Oh, 18 each. 18 each. So it's, a, it's an out and out draw. He fires at the Hobgoblin, who managed just about to batter it away with his shield, not knowing what has happened. It swings past him. He remains totally oblivious. And then here... Um, it's an 8 versus a 6, so our scores are 10, um, the Hobgoblin scores an 8, we win, but it does not penetrate his armour of 10. So bang, it just clings off the Hobgoblin's armour. So two shots have been fired there at that Hobgoblin. Okay, our uh, squire is going to make his way there, and this rather stealthy individual is making his way across there and he's going to fire his bow in fact he's going to fire his bow at this um, character up here it's quite a distance but he's within range and uh, he's going to take a shot at it here we go Shoo! up comes the bow oh and what a shot okay he scores 20 um, whereas the um, the orc scores a score of 17 so he beats the orc Okay, his score is a, um, a score of 20, whereas the orc's armour, I'll just check the orc's armour, the orc's armour I believe is, could be a 12, no, armour 11. Okay, so he beats him by 9 points of damage, points of damage. what a shot, he fires the, the bow, the arrow shoots up, hits the orc, who tumbles to his doom from that, onto the, uh, the stone floor behind the pit of what's going on here. Everybody stops for a moment and wonders why there's a clatter of armour as this orc tumbles with the arrow impaled in him from up above. Ooh, okay. Right, let's finish this turn for everybody. Heaven is going to very carefully make his way around here, the sides of the pit, uh, with his first move. And then with his second move, he is going to move this way and just get to there and start to make his way into the, um, into, the, into the depths of the dungeon. Okay, we now go to the enemy phase. Now, all the enemies for this turn 
um, and are still oblivious, even though one of their number has been shot, and that's caused uh, a shock here, but they're still enraptured in what's going on here. So until they get their turn, they are not going to move uh, and react on this turn. However, the ogre and Kyra are going to start their combat in the ground, or egged on by the other hobgoblins and orcs above. The ogre, the massive ogre, as you can see, what a figure that is. One of the old marauder ogres, citadel ogres. So, right, he's going to stride forward and attack Kyra. He's got a, a fight of plus three compared to her fight of plus four, I believe. So, yeah. She's got the edge on him, but look how big he is. Look at the power this guy has got. And here he comes. He brings that massive mace in and goes to attack our hero. Here she goes. Okay. And, oh, and he starts well as well. Look at that. He has a, uh, a score of... Um, he, the ogre has a score of uh, 21 compared to her score of 14. He brings that down with a bang, okay? Kyra is hit and hit badly right in our first uh, first combat there. Wow, oof, that was a big, big hit. He has caught her and he is beaten her by 11 points. Oof, okay, leaving her on three hit points of damage. He staggers her with a massive hit before we even begun. She is really up against it in that pit. I hope we can rescue her in time. Okay, um, the rest of these are all just staying where they are at the moment. We can't move our heroes here. They're trapped in the pit. So at the end of... Oh, now it's um, the rest of our companions phase. So the only one of the companions who is actually out of the area is Kyra, who has been uh, hit and she is going to attack back. She's going to stride in and put all of her strength, all of her power, all of her skill into this attack against the ogre. Come on! Oh, she doesn't. She just staggers and um, still loses the combat. But fortunately for her, he does not have enough of a score in order to damage her. So he just hits her back again. She staggers against this wall, egged on by these people who are really, uh, these people, these creatures who are desperate to try and um, uh, and cause further damage and are enjoying the combat that's going on deep within. It's the end of the first turn, okay, ladies and gents. So let's draw a card. Okay, let's see what happens. It's a five, a red five. Red five standing by, I have to say it, didn't I? There it is, red five standing by. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we've got. Uh, I'm using the event cards from the previous scenario. Um, red five is a booby trap. Pick one random hero. The figure takes a trap roll. Target number seven, not a perception, no. If the figure fails an immediate um, uh, plus one attack against that figure, if the attack does any damage, the alarm is raised. Okay, so pick one random hero. Let's have a look. We've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, well, she doesn't count, but she... Okay, so we'll do a seven. Let's say that's going to be a heavy, okay? He's just making his way through here. Has a target number seven. He manages to avoid that booby trap. What a guy that he is. And actually carries on making his way through the dungeon. And that takes us to turn two. Right, okay. On this turn, the um, there's going to be another stealth check. Target number 12. Right, I thought so. Those arrows winging their way through the dark and the slaying of that um, orc there have alerted the enemies. So this turn, we now have um, all of them alert as to what we're doing. So things are going to become a little tougher for our uh, companions as we head off. But we start with our ranger. The ranger is um, right in the centre of this and he's desperate to make a, make a save. So what is he going to do? He's going to use both his moves, so he moves seven and then three and a half to make his way up to here, okay, as quick as he possibly can. Within his movement, we have um, uh, Mechte, who is going to um, try, I believe, cause a distraction. He's got an eight-inch move. So that takes him flying across the front there, dives at this hobgoblin who is watching the combat in front of him. So let's work that out, okay? Mesh there has a fight of plus one against the hobgoblin's plus two, so he's up against it. And oh, and he loses as well. Okay, the hobgoblin has scored 14. The uh, Mesh there has scored a grand total of six. Uh, so anyway, he his armour, Mesh's armour is 10. He loses, he gets hit for four hit points of damage. Ouch! Ouchy, ouchy, ouch. Okay, he is now on six hit points of damage. He's got six left. Right, okay. But 
the combat has, has started. It's now the turn of the uh, of the evil creatures. This hobgoblin here with a move of six is quite brave. He rushes in the dark towards our approaching heroes, only realizing as he gets closer that uh, there are three of them as they emerge from the caverns behind. He is now going to make an attack. He's making an attack on this elven uh, warrior here. His, um, he has a plus two fight. We have a plus two fight, but we are supported as well to give us plus four. So we have the white dice has a four advantage on the white dice. Oh wow, we didn't need it, did it? Look at that, that gives us 21 to his um, score of nine. So we, his armor is a 10, so he hit, gets hit for 11 points of damage. He rushes out of the dark to his doom and is slain straight off with whirring blades. Okay, um, this, according to the, um, uh, the rules, now the, the creatures are gonna start breaking up and making their way towards the nearest enemies. He sees heaven rushing up the, uh, the wood plank and makes his way as quickly as he possibly can towards him in that direction. He may find himself isolated very, very quickly here, mightn't he? Okay, uh, here we have, there's a fight going on there. This guy is gonna start making his way towards this archer here, as is this guy, archer, archer. He is gonna offer support to uh, the warrior fighting against Meth there. He is gonna make his way that way as well. Okay, and this character is going to make his way that way. He is at the top here, is going to make his way that way towards heaven, as is this one. We find ourselves very much up against it here. And this archer is going to step forward and take a shot at our hero as he approaches. Okay, plus two to heaven's plus three. Uh, a seven against a nine, it's a miss. Okay, the, the arrow just fires, the black haft arrow fires and hits this stone over here. Oof, okay, in the creature phase, the ogre is going to fight against uh, Kyra there, deep with it underneath. Come on! Oh no. Oh no. He batters her to the ground and she is down. She can't have been recovered from that first attack, can she? She must have been in a bad way uh, when they placed her there. And unfortunately, she's found herself absolutely battered by the ogre. That is really, really unfortunate. Okay, right, it's the companion phase. Let's go for it, guys, what can we do? What can we do here? This archer is gonna turn around and he's gonna fire his shot at the, um, the past approaching hobgoblin. It's a miss. The arrow just flies past. Right, this guy, he's right there, and he is gonna fire at the hobgoblin king there. That's all that's gonna do. It's a good shot, actually. Look at that. He scores a score of 15. Uh, Hobgoblin King scores a score of four. Um, he beats the Hobgoblin's armor and hits him. So, but only for a slight amount of damage. But let's see exactly where we are when it comes to that. Because that's quite a good shot, isn't it? it really is. Okay, the Null Sergeant scored 12, armor of 11. So he has scored a score of 15. Uh, he does four points of damage on the Hobgoblin King. Four points of damage on the Hobgoblin King. An arrow sticks into his shoulder and he staggers back, having been shot. Okay, Hobgoblin King. He's hit by four, right. Who? The other archer comes forward there and also takes a shot at the Hobgoblin King. He misses, like he misses the Hobgoblin King, avoids the arrow quite easily there. And um, there we are, and our friend here, Ben, is gonna make a double move up onto the platform here and start making his way up. These, this character has run past him, hasn't he? Just out of the way. So our archers are pinging off their arrows. We are stuck in the, um, uh, the oh, Mette and the Hobgoblin here. Come on, Mette, it's about time you move the corn here. Wow, and he has as well. Wow, that is great stuff. Okay, Mester scores a score of, well, he scores a score of 12. The Hobgoblin is five. Beats the Hobgoblin by two. Knocks him back and does two points of damage on him. Okay. So that Hobgoblin is still very much in a fight, but feels the claws and the teeth of Mester as he leaps inside and leaps at him. Right, that is the end of turn three. Two. So uh, we don't draw a card, we draw a card every other turn, so we go to, uh, to turn three.
okay very old middle earth dice there from the early 80s he's not much younger there where's the rat i hear you all asking but we'll he'll soon be out i'm sure he will here we go right then okay uh we start with our hero heaven he wants to get to you because he can start pulling these up in order to aid him once he gets up here so he is going to charge at this archer here rushing in swinging his axe holding his um his shield up high he charges the uh, orcish archer who is starting to panic and pull out his knife as quick as he can but he does manage to pull out his knife and uh, the orc archer scores 20 whereas uh heaven scores a score of 12 okay and uh he has armor 12 actually so he is hit for eight points of damage ah heaven staggers back having been hit by eight point four eight points of damage by an orc archer right okay uh, uh. okay how many hit points has he got okay. started with 18 so he is yeah he's still in the fight he's still in the fight he's got 10 hit points left okay um i don't think he was in range of three inches so i think what we're going to look at here now is how the the creature is going to react. Steps in. Hit heaven. Luckily, look at that. He comes back with a score of 18. Uh, beating the Null Archer. The Null Archer. Let's have a look at the Null Archer's stats. To see how he's going to fare against um, armor-wise, etc. Against heaven. Swinging his axe around. Banging against the uh, armor of the Null in order to try and uh, no archer has got armor 11 so heaven has scored 18 so it's in seven points of damage he is staggered back but still in the fight staggered but still battling on okay archer he's got three points of damage okay this orc rushes here and attacks heaven as he approaches as well Oops, Daisy, he scores 13, and he scores 5. All oh, right, okay. So it's 15, his armor is 12, he's hit for a further 3 points of damage, and staggers back. Uh, okay, he's got 7 points of damage. Points. What can he do? What can he do? Okay, uh, this orc can see Ben coming up that way. So he's going to turn around, and actually he's going to charge down, uh, down to a fight, and fight with him there. That spear pull it towards him as he rushes up the wooden plank can he stay on it i don't know let's find out let's find out uh ooh, 16 all okay uh he has a fight of plus three so he beats the orc by one according to me um plus two against plus three yep so it does seven points of damage on him and hits him back up the ramp and starts to battle his way up there as well so that orc has been is on three hit points that's a good strike there isn't it this orc here can see what's going on that way and is going to carry on here until he turns the corner and sees heaven on the other side of the rocks there. Okay, here, this orc rushes towards our um, elven archer friend here. So there's a battle going on here. Two plus two. Uh, it's a hit for both, but no damage is caused. Our archer is just forced back a little bit. So, yeah, quite, um, quite a battle going on there. This one's going to rush down that way. This one is also going to rush to the bridge. Uh, Keeney is down there. The ogre is stuck in the pit. It can't get out until it's rescued. This orc is going to rush forward and fight Mechter the Hound. Come on, Mechter. Oh, it's a really low score in attack uh, where he loses to Mechter, but no damage is caused. So he's pushed back. Infuriated by the arrows being shot across, the uh, Hobgoblin King rushes forward Dinga, to attack Mechter the Hound. Oh yes, and he has hit him. Okay, he has a score. His, um, let me just check. His uh, fight is plus three. He has scored four, so he's, hit, he's got a 17. To Methler's fight, uh, 14. Methler is hit for seven points of damage. He's on one hit point. He's on one hit point and he staggers around. <sighs> okay, this one is going to try and offer some support here as well. My companion's face. Right on the top, on the um, the bridge way here, uh, our squire is going to do battle with the orc. 
and both score low so um there is no damage there and actually he forces us back just a little bit and starts to do a battle there like so these two step forward onto the there and take a shot at the king it's a miss again four against eight if you can't see it and this archer here is going to take a shot against the king as well oh no look at that 20 scores the hobgoblin king he really is on fire isn't he and our archer scores a score of 13 so he misses this archer here is going to fire at the hobgoblin who's now trying to force him into combat and what a hit Wham, shoof. the arrow fires out hits him and that is going to be enough to kill him my friend this hobgoblin tumbles th that way i would say into the pit and lands with a thud deep within the uh in the pit itself okay that is all them it's now time for the um the random phase okay it's an ace it's a red ace what have we got it's going to be red ace what have we got let's find out red ace a soldier has escaped from Torbjorn and the police is on the table. Please, anywhere we wish on the, on the side of the table. Okay, where well, we have our soldier from last time was left to die in the um, uh, uh, outside the area and has appeared through the main area. So he is with us for the next turn and I don't think he could have arrived soon enough, could he? Okay, here we go. Heaven, it's about time that you, uh, you started to uh, ruin your corn here, my friend. Okay, here we go. He is going to use a heroic ability, I think, this turn. Let's see if we can get a deadly strike in. We need it. We are desperate for it. Let's have a little look through the skills list. Deadly strike. Uh, oh, if he has rolled a natural 18 or 19. And what's a powerful blow do? Let's have a look. Plus three to damage, hand attack is already. Oh, okay. So maybe we can do that. Now, let's have a look. Step forward, my friend, and do battle with your crowd in front of you. He can hear these in the pit now. He can hear the cries for help. He can just about make out the shadows of their eyes deep in the pit as he rushes forward. And, sorry. And scores a great hit. Okay. I'm going to use the powerful blow, which makes a, a plus three damage. So he scores a 23 to, and decapitates this orc. Absolutely falls into the pit in front of him. Whew, okay, no companions within three inches, so um, it's on to the enemies. Now the enemies will start at the top here. This archer orc is going to take a shot at Heaven, who's right in front of him. 15, 17, um, yes, he does hit him as well, doesn't he? Okay, because he scores uh, plus two, so that gives him a 19. Uh, Heaven has scored plus three, that gives him an 18. So um, a 19, take away 12, seven points of damage he takes from an arrow another arrow heaven oh falls to the ground an arrow in the chest it was an epic effort from him wasn't it well epicish and uh, he has fallen to the ground within inches of the pit ouch This orc is going to make his way around here. He can't get onto the bridge. This orc is going to attack our squire here. here. Oh, okay. We beat him by one. We have got a fight at plus three. We both scored 17, if you can't see it. So that's 20 for us and 19 for the orc. Uh, and that is a big hit. We forced him back last time. This time we kill the orc in front of us. You can see him falling down to the ground here. Right, okay. Um, the... Hobgoblin King angrily, angrily strides forward and attacks Melte. He scores 11, Melte scores 3. He has a plus 3, so he's 14. It's enough to take our loyal hound out of the game for the fourth game running. Ouch. Okay. Um, this Hobgoblin is going to make his way towards our archer friend there. This one's going to cover the bridge to this side. These are still backed up here. He's going to attack our archer friend. Oh, but the archer comes in with a score of 15 to his 8. Beats the hobgoblin by 5 points, staggering him back. Okay, some victories. Okay, he's on 5 points of damage. Oof, right. Companions phase. We need some help here, don't we? We really need to get going here. 
Charge! Yes! Up there to offer some support. Oh, we got, can't do it yet. So he has to do a combat first. Eight against seven, our friend scores uh, 11. So he does hit one point of damage. Now, he's on the edge of the pit there. So I'm gonna have to say he's gonna have to take a stealth test of 10 in order to stay. Yes, he manages to step aside. So our friend is there. Ha. Okay, this archer, now I can see that we, we need to get these out, don't we? We need to get these out as quick as we possibly can. Otherwise we're gonna get overwhelmed in this lower area of the dungeon. Um, the archer is going to make his way up here and support, uh, offer a, a combat supported by the squire. Here we go. Uh, he scores nine. Uh, he gets plus two for support. That gives him eleven plus his own uh, skill of a of plus two. So that gives him thirteen against the orc score of five. So it does hit him. Yep, he hits him and um, uh, hits him with three points of damage. Uh, already taken a hit as well. So. Down to six, okay? Forcing him back. Our archer here is gonna move halfway up the bridge, offering support, and he's gonna fire at the Hobgoblin King. Uh, yeah, he scores a 10, but it's not enough to pender his armor. So the Hobgoblin King is um, still in the game there. And now we've got this soldier as well. So the soldier is gonna rush forward around the edge of the pit and get himself to there. Start making his way up to try and take part in the rescue. Okay, <coughs> that's the end of the turn. We have a, a card drawn this turn. It's a three of red. Red three. So what does that give us? Red three, uh, an all. Place one all fighter in the centre point of the table. Roll a random direction and move an all eight inches in it. Okay, so we've got another uh, bad guy is turning up. So he's going to uh, move eight inches from the centre of the table. So if we use this uh, as a pointer, it's pointing that way. So that would put our, from the centre of the table, that would put him in a pit. So let's put him, uh, let's make sense that he runs. Oh! It's live television, folks. And our orc has taken a plunge and broken off his base. So let's put him in the hospital for now and replace him with this hobgoblin who rushes across out of the darkness in order to take place, take part in this battle. Ah, right. Turn five. Here we go. We're still up against it, I think, here. Very much up against it. The bad guys go first. We have not got our ranger in, um, in combat at the moment, so let's start down here. This hobgoblin is going to rush forward and do battle with the archer. Okay, he's... Archer scores a 13, Hobgoblin scores a 9. So the Archer beats him by uh, 5. Uh, his armor is 5. Boom! That hit is enough to fling him into the pit and place him and send him to his doom. Okay, um, this Hobgoblin here is going to attack our soldier friend. Rush forward there. 18 to score 5. Beating him by 10 points of damage. Uh, by 10. Take away his armor of 10. Hits him and kills him outright with a blow. Things can change so quickly in this game, as we've seen um, in the previous games that we played. I think um, the D20 system means that there are big swings indeed. The Hobgoblin King is going to make his way up the stairs to here. Uh, that's the quickest way for him to get at anybody, I feel. And this one is going to come forward to there. And this one is also going to make his way up the stairs to this area. Stuck in the mud here. The archer will take a shot at the squire, who is over there. Let's have a look. Uh, ooh. 20. <laughs> uh, okay, he scores a score of 22. Uh, the squire scores a score of uh, 18. So it's a hit, he's got 12 uh, points of armour, so he's hit for 10 with an arrow in the back. Ah! 14 hits, so Squire is on four. He falls to his knees with an arrow protruding from his back, but still manages his, to, uh, to stay in the fight. This Hobgoblin comes up this way. Right. Mm. Companions. Okay. Okay. 
raising from his knees and pulling the arrow out of his back, he attacks the hot orc in front of him. And yeah, he hits him and wins the combat but does nothing more than push him back. Elven Archer, fire at the king. Oops, a daisy. Where did that go? Okay. It's important I roll it again because, as you can see, the Hobgoblin King has only scored two. <laughs> so my two as well. So uh, he avoids the arrow. Uh, this archer is coming up as well. He's going to fire his arrow. And he is going to... I'm having all sorts of drama now. Look at that. Also broken off his base. Our Elven Archer friend. Uh, okay. It's a disaster, guys. It's a disaster. And he misses as well. Okay. And our friend here is going to take a pop at the Hobgoblin King as well. You can just about see into the darkness. So he's going to take a shot. Here we go. And he misses as well. These Elven Archers are not exactly covering themselves in glory at the moment. Has to be said. Um, where am I? Okay, that was the companions phase, so that is the end of this turn, turn five. There is uh, no card this turn, so we go straight to the next turn. So we're straight back in with the villains. So let's have a little look here. This orc is going to charge the soldier who has beaten him. Beat him back last? No, he didn't. He was his first time. So that is a score of 18 for the Solia against the Orc score of 16. It's a win of 8 points. Hits him for 8 points of damage. Staggers him back. Let's make him take a stealth throw there, guys, just for the hell of it. Score, uh, target roll is 10. 4. Into the pit he falls. Bang! Whether he's dead or not, but he's out of the game. Out of the game for the time being. So that is good news for us. Okay, uh... There's not much else going on in this bottom level, but it's all happening up here. The Hobgoblin King rushes forward to do battle with the Elven Warrior here, um, who, is in, who is supported. So I have plus four, it is plus three. Oh, okay. He has scored 21 to my 13. Okay, it's a win, uh, and it's 13 points of damage, and he outright kills the archer, I believe. Let me just check, see how many points he has. Yeah, he's got a health of 10. Oh, he's a mighty villain, is that Hobgoblin. Uh, he's going to rush forward there and do combat with him, aided by them. Oh, both uh, low scorers. So um, he pushes him back, but does nothing more than that. This Hobgoblin, no, this uh, Orc, who's on low hit points, is actually to do battle with this yeah. Oh, what a hit that is. It is actually a, uh, a critical hit, killing this orc out of the way and getting rid of him, which is great. Into the pit he falls. <sighs> Desperately wounded, but still battling on. Um, okay. I think this orc will actually move back across here now, and this one is going to take a shot at our squire. Oh, that squire could have been our last hope, couldn't he? Could have been the last hope. 18, 9. What a dead eye this guy is. Out the black haft arrow flies through the darkness, takes out the squire. That is really, really bad for us. But here we are. The companions are going to battle on. Here we go. What can we do? Can we get here? If I can just get at these people, I think we've got a really good chance. But whether we'll be able to do that is another thing altogether, isn't it? That's not far, this fellow, is he? You know he has no base, but he's going to take a shot at the hobgoblin above there. It's a poor shot. Misses him. Him is going to take a shot at the hobgoblin king. A couple of hits, we'll take him out. We might get it here. Okay, he scores 18. Hobgoblin scores uh, 18 as well. It's a draw. <laughs> Catches it on his armour. So, yeah, come on, my friend. Six, up he comes. And I'm going to say yes. Let's offer some support there. We need all the support we can get. 
So that just cancels out the fight that he'll fight the Bob Goblin here and loses really badly. The Hobgoblin scores 19 to the soldiers, 9. Hobgoblin hit him with 9 points of damage, leaving him on one hit point. Ah. Okay. Okay. It's the end of the turn. Here we go. It's a three of reds. Three of reds. Here we go. Three red, three red, three red. What does three red offer us? A null. Set the foot the table, random direction. So the centre foot of the table is here, isn't it? Five inches that way. So clambering out of the pit comes a null fight there, or a, uh, an orc fight there in our case. Clambers his way out of the pit, stands there. Just what we needed. Just what we needed, okay. Garish, many boffins died to try and rescue you here. We start the next turn. It's going to be uh, starting with the villains. Hobgoblin King will go first. Steps forward, supported by his friend to fight the Elven Archer. So he has plus five to the Archer's plus two. You know, sometimes things happen, don't they, where you least expect them. And the Elven Archer has scored a score of 20, which is a, uh, a critical hit on the Hobgoblin King. A critical hit on the Hobgoblin King. What does that call cause? Right, guys, let me just um, <laughs> look this up. Just give me a second, because I think it does, um, it's not double damage, it causes plus three, I believe, or something like that. Let me just hand-to-hand -hand combat, okay. Uh, combat score 20, okay. What does the critical, critical hits, plus five damage. He has scored 20. The Hobgoblin King scores a score of 3 plus his uh, plus 5, so that gives him a score of 8, whereas I've scored 22. Okay, I would have done 10 points of damage on him, I do 15 points of damage on him, and send him tumbling into the pit. What a legend that guy is there. Whew, okay, we needed that, we certainly did. Right. Um, what else are we going to do? Okay, villains. That way. There. Takes a shot at the archer. Could be the end though, couldn't it? Archer's got plus two scores. Um, a score of um, uh, 20 against this guy. What a man of the match this, this fella's doing an interview. 20 points of damage. Uh, so he's going to beat the archer who scores 17. So he's going to beat his armor by 10. What is the archer's hit points? I believe they are going to be 10. <laughs> Black Hafted Arrow takes out the, on the edge of triumph. Just as he has killed the Hobgoblin King, he lifts his arms in triumph and he is shot by our pig faced friend here. Oh. Fight the soldier. Fight the soldier. Uh, our soldier beats him, not pushes him back, but no damage is caused to either of our friends. Okay. Uh, okay. It's the companion phase. Companion phase. Right, things are getting desperate now. Charge. Do you know what? Just when things get desperate occasionally, that's when things start to happen, don't they? <laughs> The Solia scores a score of 20 to the, uh, or the Hobgoblin score of 14, beats him by 10 points, killing him outright. <laughs> okay, Archer, I know you're far away, but you've got some stuff to do here. Take a shot at their Archer. Yes, scores 14 to the Archer's 7, doing 4 points of damage on the Oak Archer who is, well, no matter what happens, is the man of the match here. End of the turn. There is no um, uh, card this turn. Okay, so it's the next turn. Let's see where we are. Right. No card, we take it off. 
Uh, it's the evil creature's face. So we have got this guy here who's going to make, he's made a wrong move here, but he's going to make his way around that way in order to try and attack our soldier friend. He's going to take a shot at the soldier. <laughs> he scores 17 to the soldier's score of um, 5. <laughs> I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that um, our archer friend here is going to uh, go and find his base for a start and use the better part, part of Valor and take a step away from this awful, disastrous rescue mission deep under Tor Verde. The orcs and hobgoblins have taken some horrendous casualties, but they still hold the uh, underground lair of Tor Verdon, um, and our heroes are still capt uh, are still captured. Um, let's have a look at the injuries to see what exactly is going to happen to uh, our friends who are down at the moment. <laughs> Um, ouch, that was, that was tough going, that was really tough going, but I think that, um, yeah, it was, it was good fun, I enjoyed that, it was, it was very, very good fun, and it was a scenario I'd written myself, um, I think I gave myself a lot to do, but, and I think we didn't exactly have much luck on the roll, on the dice rolls there either, did we, so things could have been a lot better than they actually were. But let's find out exactly um, what is going to happen in between the games to our, our friends. Because that is important for us now, isn't it? Finding out what goes on and what, how we're going to progress. Um, just trying to find it in the book I am here. Sorry, guys. Okay, here we are. Okay, Kyra. She was really badly beaten by the ogre, wasn't she? She had been such a good fighter for us in the previous fights. I rolled a d20. 19, full recovery. Thank the gods for that. Melte, six, badly wounded. Okay, what does that mean? Figure suffered a grievous wound. Oh, he fights the next game on half wounds. He's had an out din since day one. And we have um, Heaven. Score four, permanent injury. What's his permanent injury? Is an 11, lost fingers. Uh, minus one penalty to shoot. So, yeah, luckily he hasn't got a bow. We have um, a couple of elven uh, archers who are just uh, sort of companions for that game. So they are going to be in a bad way. We'll have to check on them again. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for joining me. It's been a great uh, afternoon's play. Uh, and it was quite a quick one today. Uh, it's quite a brutal game. But uh, I really enjoyed this game of Rangers of Shadow Deep. But I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed your time here as well. Diolch And And, um, yep. Back to the drawing board. Where are we going to be next week? I don't know. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.